as you think of life being mapped and as power changing, a whole series of areas of our lives are going to be changed. And sometimes I've talked about what it does to chemistry companies, or pharma companies, or biotech companies, or insurance companies, or chip companies, or manufacturing companies, or energy companies. But it even starts to change things like religion. So to be completely non-controversial, let me bring together two words that often go together, religion and evolution. That is a fact, right? Species go extinct and so too do religions. Do we have any proof of this? Well, this is what the Sumerian religions look like and how they evolved from being sky gods into air gods into wisdom gods into lady of wine. They were getting smarter here. <laughs> then they invented evil queen of the underworld. All kinds of things coming together. And then there were these other folks. They thought, you know, if we don't throw 20 virgins with their hearts cut off off the top of this thing, maybe the sun won't come up. You put out a thesis like that, one day the head priest sleeps in, the 20 virgins aren't sacrificed, the sun comes up. Oops. A little bit of dissonance between what you're saying and what happens. And of course, we've worshipped gods of death. We've worshipped gods of the sea, or gods of the sky, or gods of the rain, or gods of whatever. The Mayans had hundreds of these gods. And here there was a common argument. This, or these, are the one true gods. We, and we priests alone, have discovered the one truth. You don't follow this truth, we will burn you. We will kill you, we will eliminate you, or you will rot in hell because we, and we alone, know the answer. Curiously enough, recent archaeological digs have found a series of these gods, of these priests, who used to use their power to hurt people and to prove that their god was the only true god. This is what one of these archaeological digs looks like. Here's a history of what we know about single gods. Single gods were not very popular over the 150,000 years that we've been here, as far as we know, until about right here where you started getting things like Judaism and Christianity and Muslims and Protestants, just to put this concept in a historical framework <laughs> of how this stuff has evolved. But we have now discovered the truth, depending on which part of the world you're in. The interesting thing is how many of these things have common roots and evolve from common roots. So here you've got this nice fellow Abraham who actually is really important to these three very different religions. And if you want to get a little bit closer and more personal, here is someone of the Jewish religion who gives birth to early Christianity until you've got a great schism. And then you get your first evolution between the Greek and the Russian Orthodox and the Roman Catholics, and then the Roman Catholics beget a whole series of other things, like the version of Guadalupe and a whole series of different groups. And then you get this nasty fellow, Luther, who comes along, and he evolves and begets a whole series of other things. And then, of course, a little more recently, you've got the Mormons coming out over here from somewhere. <laughs> but, of course, there's an evolution to this stuff, right? And a lot of common beliefs and a lot of common structures and a lot of common things. And the closer they are, the more they seem to fight. There's a whole series of questions that scientists, I don't think, should be answering or trying to answer at this point. Well, those questions have to do with the who and the why of the universe. But scientists are, and they're actively and quickly mapping the edges of life, the edges of the known universe, the edges of power, the edges of the body, the edges of how things are done, and when religions start to get into the questions of how and what, then they get into real trouble. Because as soon as you leave the realm of who and why and move into the how and what, you can end up with some really nasty surprises. Here's what one of these surprises looks like. 
Right? All of a sudden, you have a universe that revolves around the Earth, and this nasty fellow comes up with a telescope, finds that the Earth actually revolves around other things, and he gets excommunicated for that fact. Fortunately, the Catholic Church knows how to recognize its mistakes. So it recognized that Galileo was right in the 1990s. But hell, who's counting? Thank you.